Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to talk about the TOEFL exam. So before we start, let me ask you, do any of you know what TOEFL is? What we commonly call in Bengali, it a khai na mathai dai. So let us begin. So the TOEFL exam, the full form of which is test of English as a foreign language, is an examination testing your proficiency in the English language and this test is taken by ETS, Educational Testing Service, which is an international organization. Now this test is basically an evaluation of how well can you speak, listen, write and read English. I'll come to the detailed descriptions later. The TOEFL exam is generally divided into two large categories. One is the PBT or the paper based test and the other is the IBT or the internet based test. With the evolu evolution and sp spread of internet, the IBT has become more popular. This exam has the full marks of 120 and after the upcoming of the COVID pandemic, ETS has, has ensured that we can sit for 2FL even within the comforts of our homes, though I personally have not uh, tried that out, nor do I know anyone who has tried that out, but I can see that on the website of ETS, there is an option to take the test at home. The home page of ETS's website and the website from which you can take the TOEFL test, links to them will be given down in the description. Don't forget to check them out. Now, coming to the second thing about TOEFL, which is why is it necessary and what are some necessary information which we must keep in mind while appearing for the TOEFL. Now, I assume this video will be mostly watched by people who are citizens of India. Even if you are not watching from India, you will easily find what amount of money you are required to give for TOEFL if you just Google TOEFL IBT fees and then the name of your country. For India, it's something around 12,000 to 14,000 depending on the rate of dollar to Indian rupee currency. When I appeared for the exam in 2018, I had to pay something around 12,700 which since has increased because the amount is fixed in dollars and since the ratio of dollar and rupee keeps on changing, so the amount which we have to pay as Indian citizens also keeps on changing. This is also very much applicable for all other countries because the ratio of dollar to your country's currency will also keep on changing as and when time progresses. And the second thing which we must keep in mind is that at this moment, TOEFL, the score of TOEFL is valid for only two years since the day you take the exam. Now I know this is very ridiculous as our language proficiencies don't just vanish away after two years, especially for those of us who are from India who have had 200 years of colonial history and have had English people rule over us for 200 years. Our knowledge and proficiency of English is going nowhere. But still the scores test is valid for only two years. So if you are taking the test, make sure you apply for whichever post or whichever degree you are applying for within the next two years of taking the TOEFL test. Which brings me to the question, why is the test necessary? Where does it come to your aid? All foreign universities, especially the ones in the United States of America and England, all of them accept TOEFL and IELTS. I'll come to IELTS in a separate video. If you want me to talk about that, please let me know down in the comments. But all of these universities accept TOEFL and IELTS as a measure of your English proficiency. Since uh, Indians are not from an English speaking country, we have to prove that we can speak English well in order to go and settle in their countries for a few years. Any program in foreign universities, be it a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, and definitely for a PhD, you require a TOEFL. And 
a good TOEFL score in my opinion should not be less than 100. It's very easy to score more than 110 in TOEFL out of 120. But in some universities, especially the Ivy League colleges of uh, USA like Harvard, Princeton, Pennsylvania and many more, they require a score of more than 115. At least that was the case in 2018 and 19. In recent times, more and more universities are requiring you to have a higher score in TOEFL as the exam is not at all that difficult. So you require a good TOEFL score and you need to pass your TOEFL, which means that you have to score, I think, 20 in each category. There are four categories. You have to score 20 in each category. 20 into 4 is 80. So you have to score a minimum of 80 in order to pass the TOEFL. For some universities, there are some which accept 70 to 80 as a range as well. There is no pass score set by ETS. It's determined by the university for which you are applying. But a score around 90 to 110 is generally the standard. If you score more than it, you will obviously have a huge advantage. As I already told you at the beginning of the video, there are four parts of the TOEFL test. Listening, speaking, reading and writing. All these four parts have 30 marks each equally divided. The parts are pretty self-explanatory. Only in the listening part, you will listen to an audio passage from which you will be asked questions and there will be a limit to the number of times you can play the audio. In our time in the year 2018, it was twice. I think it might have increased since uh, because of a more inclusive understanding of disability amongst the people who run ETS. But in general, it's two to three times you can play the audio and then you can answer the questions. Speaking, you will only get one chance to speak. That is, if you make any mistakes, if you fumble, if you stutter, if you stammer, that will be counted in while they evaluate you. It's not that difficult as I keep on saying. The writing and reading parts are extremely easy. They'll just give you paragraphs and then questions from those paragraphs, so word meanings, general English language stuff. Reading also you have to read something and understand. Writing they will give you a topic on which you have to write. Listening, you will listen to something and answer and speaking they will give you a topic or they will give you an audio and then you have to give your response verbally. All of these parts are pretty easy. Only you have to make sure that since all of us or most of us speak in an in Indian accent, your words are properly enunciated so that the computer which listens to you knows what words you are speaking while your speaking part is going on. Most of this is evaluated by artificial intelligence and not by actual people. So if you make some mistakes in your pronunciation or if your accent is not the standardized Indian accent per se, you might lose out on it. So try to be accurate in your pronunciation and make your pronunciation as close to the British or the American pronunciation as you possibly can, then you will have no problems. Let's come to how to do well in this test. For those of you who are studying English literature or have a knack for reading books, this test is going to be a cakewalk for you. I can give you a guarantee of that. This test is not at all difficult. But if you are from, an, uh, from another background or if your English is not that strong, I can give you four very specific tips for the four different areas. Starting with reading. Obviously, you have to read more books. If you are learning English the way you are learning a foreign language using grammar, syntax and sentence formation, of course, that will formulate your base like nothing better. But you also have to see the way in which people use English. Not everyone uses English the same way. The way in which Ruskin Bond writes is not the same way in which James Joyce writes, though both of them are great writers of the English language, right? So you have to read a variety of authors. In the link to the description, I will put down a list of 20 books of fiction, which was recommended to me by Siddhartoda, a senior of mine and a teacher at Ramakrishna Vishen Narendrapur where I did my undergrads. He recommended me 20 books of fiction to read to improve my English style, which I will link down in the description. Similarly, I would, I would advise you to write at least half a page every day 
and then reflect on it the next day. I'm not saying that write every day, write one day and reflect the next. Listen to English podcasts for the listening part. And as for speaking, I think making YouTube videos or speaking to yourself while you are thinking, thinking in English might help you a lot if you are wanting to improve your English skills or want to be at a position where you don't have to stammer or stutter while you are speaking in a language which might not essentially be your mother tongue. Is the test worth it? Well, this depends on who you are. There is no yes or no hard and fast answer to this question. If you have enough money to appear for the test, if you are coming from a background of privilege, which you are if you are watching this video, in 99% of the cases you are already privileged, you have a, a smart device, you have a stable internet connection. In that case, you can probably afford the test. But remember, TOEFL is only a requirement. In most cases, your TOEFL score won't even be considered unless and until it's extraordinarily brilliant or unless and until there is a tie with someone. In that case, your TOEFL score might be considered. In 99% of the cases, the other things of the application like your statement of purpose, your academic record, your letters of recommendation, all of these things together, all of which I will be covering in my video about foreign PhD admissions which is coming up in this channel soon. For that, subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon. But all of these things are more important. So is the test worth it? If you are serious about your application abroad, only then apply for this test because only this test along with GRE are the two things which you, which you are required to take before your admissions. Also, I personally believe for the students of English literature, TOEFL will become redundant in the near future, just as GRE has become redundant in the United States of America for English students that did not require to take the GRE subject in 2019. Today, most universities don't even require you to take the GRE general. I believe in the near future, universities would do away with TOEFL for people who have studied English for five years or more. So if you are a student of English literature, beware. Keep yourself up to date. But if you are not, nothing to worry about. Take the test if you are serious about it. But remember, it's just a first step. There is a long way to go. So be persistent, be resilient, be tenacious. And that is all for today. Thank you for watching my video. Please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. And also if you have any questions, queries, doubts, comments or suggestions, please don't forget to leave them down in the comments. I will see you people in the next video. Till then, hasta la vista.